How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and this time we're going over another deck profile and that is of Slug Hero. So if you don't know, Hero, Hero is for Hero Gun from the, I don't know which number of movie it was, but one of the Dragon Ball Z movies. And this incorporates the old set 4 Slug Leader with the Hero Gun chain from the Draft Box 6. And I know I did cover this before on my channel, but I've brought it back again because it's had a few changes, not too many, but I also think it could be a pretty good deck or quite fun maybe even rogue deck to pick to take to uh, card fest because it's something that's not expected and it can perform very well quite quickly in this meta because this is more of a turn three deck and by turn three I mean it goes off properly on turn three with its full potential. So as we do normally do in each deck profile we're going to go over the leader first then go over the uh, deck list going over each card individually explaining what the reason they're in what they do and um, the reason why they're there and then afterwards we're going to go for the turn by turn progression afterwards. So with the lead, it's one of the old ones, so it's back from set 4 and it's quite e it's quite simple and easy. It's got an activate main on the front side which is similar to the Vegeta for set 1 where activate main, once per turn, you choose one card from your life to your hand and then um, it gains critical for the turn. So that means early turn you're pressuring your leader by swinging with this with critical and they're either choosing to not take not not combo out of it, take the hit and lose a card from life so they're not getting anything but you've created their life down so they're not gaining anything but they're still losing life or they're trying to combo out of it which means they're losing cards from hand to avoid taking that early damage and it's got an easy awaken, a defensive one as well where when your life's at 4 or less you draw 2 cards and flip it over so nice to gain more cards from that way and on the front side it's got the same auto as most leaders do which is that nice auto of when it's actually draw a card and now it's, re it's got a new activate main which has been replaced from the old one which is uh, activate main once per turn you choose one card in your hand to discard it as a cost and then your opponent, the uh, resolution is your opponent chooses one card in hand and discards it so that's quite nice, you basically discard one card fr from your hand and make your opponent discard one from their hand so an eye for an eye and then that also allows you to set up things in the drop that you want to which we'll go over later on the deck profile so once, as I said, quite a simple leader and a nice one to help with built and self awakening meaning you have to worry about your opponent forcing you to awaken, you you can do it yourself. And if they want to help you flip over faster, that's absolutely fine. So starting off, we'll start off with the unison deck, which is the Hirudagon one, Giant Force, from the same set that the uh, chain came from. And it's a nice one because it's only a one specific cost, meaning it can come down quite cheap, quite quite early as well, and helps you easily set up um, charismatic and also helps you progress the chain as well because of its effects. So first off, it's got a permanent, where this card can attack if it has three or fewer markers on, which means if it's got three or less markers, there's no attacking from it. Once it gets four or more markers, it can swing. And being at 15k, that's a decent amount of power to swing your leader, force them to either lose a card or take the damage. And now it has an auto skill, where you choose one card in your hand and discard as the cost. When your opponent comp when your opponent combos, you place one card from the combo area in its drop area, and then negate the skill for the duration of the turn. So that is pretty good, like just like with the leader, the discard, uh, discarding a card allows you to set up things in drop that you might want, and allows you to stop your opponent's combo where it's stopping your opponent from setting up arrival things like that. It's quite nice, or even just dropping a 10k from their com uh, combo area so they got a common more to try and come out of an attack is pretty nice. And then it's got two mark skills, one to help you get. One's a plus two and a plus one, so it's got one to help you get further up to allow it to attack, and one to just help you progress your turn and the chain. So the plus two is just an activate main, choose one card in your hand and discard it. So you once again helps you set up things in drop that you might want, and also gets you more mark more markers quicker to allow it to attack. Or you can go for the plus one, which is just activate main, choose one of your hero or phantom demon cards and KO it. So that's quite nice in that that effect is what helps you go up the chain because the chain needs to be KO'd or removed by your opponent's skills to advance. And speaking of chain, first off we've got the thing that starts it off which is uh, Minota, Unsealed Hero. It's got a similar effect to most of the chain where um, what, they, they all have the, a thing where um, well most of the chain has I think from from this one, the 3, the 4 and the 6 drop all have the same kind of thing of where um, when this card is moving you back there by opponent's skill or KO'd, you 
you get to do something. So this one is you choose from two effects. This is either you choose one Herudicon card from your with an entry cost of three from your deck or hand, and shuffle it uh, and, then sh and play it, and then shuffle your deck if you look through it. So that's quite nice in the fact, and it's nicer than some of the old chains we used to get, where um, it had to be from a certain area. This allows it means that if you draw into some of the pieces, you can still play it from your hand. Like you lose cards from your hand, but you still get the option just in case there isn't any in your deck. And the other option is you draw a card. So the good thing is you resolve this effect when you, when it comes to resolution, you can resolve one of these two effects. If you if you're trying to stop you from playing something, you can draw a card instead. Or if you have no targets, no Harugan targets in your deck or hand, you can draw a card instead, which is quite nice. And we play four copies of most of the chain to make sure we've got enough copies to be able to go for a full chain or even multiple chains if need to be. And then the one that Manuka goes into is the Rudigan, so it's got the exact same effect, but uh, instead it, cho it either chooses a, for its first part, for its first option, it either chooses a Rudigan with an entry cost of four to play, or the other effect isn't a draw, it's your opponent chooses one card in hand and discards it. So that's quite nice, you go up further the chain or you force your opponent to discard it, which is quite nice. And both of them being 15k means you can pressure your opponent as you go up the ch chain, because 15k is what most people's leaders are on the backside, and allows you to avoid them either combo out or take the damage, which is quite nice. You can get quite a lot of swings from this chain too. And then the 4 drop is Rudigan Fantastic Arrival. Now this is the reason why it's a turn 3 deck, because this one has a restriction on one of its effects. So first of all it's got two autos. The first one is kind of similar to the unison, where, but it doesn't have the uh, cost to it. It's just when your opponent combos, you may place one card from their combo area, or from the opponent's combo area in the drop area, and then you get your skill for the duration of the turn. So it's quite nice, you can get that effect from the unison but for free. And it's nice to have it in both your opponent, yours and your opponent's turn. And then is ever also, this is where the requirement comes in, because its cost for this also is if you have three or more energy. So this is why it's a turn three deck. And, it, and it's similar to when when this card is removed from your opponent from your battle area by opponent's skill or KO'd, you play one Herudigan card with an energy cost of six from your deck or hand, and then shuffle your deck if you look through it. And it's got nice uh, clause where if you didn't play a battle card, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and discards it. So it's quite nice, and if your opponent stops you from playing the six drops by an effect or by some counter or something like that, or you don't have a target, you then get you still get to do something else in making discard, which is quite nice. And once then we play four copies of each one to make sure we can we can have targets for it in the deck or hand and also if you want to play a second chain um, or multiple chains we can and then that four drop goes into the six drop now this one has critical so it's applying some nice pressure denying your opponent life which is cool when it swings and it has a way to play out even if you if you got in hand on a four drop by its ex evolve which is on the top of a herudigan with entry cost of four so that means the one before and it's got an auto and avic battle. So the first is the auto, which is when this card is removed from your battle area by opponent's skill or code. You play one Herudigan card with entry cost of either four or nine from your deck or hand and shuffle your deck. And if and if you look through it, yeah, shuffle your deck if you look through it. And then you can't play copies of this card for the turn, so you can't play any more six drops. And if you didn't play a battle card, you choose two cards in your opponent's hand and discard them. So that's quite nice where if your opponent stops you from playing either like a card off that skill you get to just discard two cards from hand instead which is quite nice so it means that if they want to try and stop you they're going to be punished for stopping you and if they don't stop you you get to play um, either a four drop or a six nine drop now you might be wondering why would you play a four drop off this why wouldn't you go further up the chain well the good thing about the f uh, doing it, that is that you can then go back into four drop to get another swing and then also have if you use the because what you would normally do is go in the four drop, like swing to not use, make sure you use the alt, the first auto before you uh, go further to drop on your opponent's combo area to, for, to be more um, forceful and trying to push damage through. Then go in a six drop, pressure that way, and then uh, KO in the, the six drop in the way to then bring back up the four drop, and then be able to get never swing in and then never den uh, denial of combo power from it. And then it, when it comes to your opponent's turn after your turn, because that not, not would normally be in your turn, you then get the effect of the four dot, and then go back up for the chain, the six drop, because now it's gone to a never turn. So that's a, that's one reason why I might try to get some gameplay of this to show off uh, if I can, if I do it for any game fest testing. And then with the activate battle on it, is a way to KO itself to make, try and get that uh, effect off of the auto, which is KO, activate battle, KO discard as the cost. 
then choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards and KO them. So not only do you get the way to trigger up the chain to go further or back down, you also get some removal when KOing two battle cards as well by KOing yourself. So you KO two battle cards, then get its effect to either play something new, either a 4-drop or a 9-drop, or make a discard two card. So KOing two and making a discard two is pretty nice. And the fact that there are five, uh, 5k combos is quite nice as well, meaning they're not dead in your hand, for, you can use a combo power. And then we have the next part of the chain being the 9 drop target, well one of the two 9 drop targets for the 6 drop. So this is one we only play 3 copies of because of the fact it's a 1 cost 10k combo. So it's going to be dead in hand, and, but we do want to see it so we can ditch, ditch it and have it in the drop area ready. And yeah, you have one in, you can have one in deck or hand to play it from the 6 drop or you can play it by its one of its skills went from drop and that's where the important thing of the lead the and the units are coming where they can discard it from the ha hand to put in the drop ready. So it's got unique and blocker. I'm not gonna bother going over ex it energy exhaust because all multicolors have it. It also has revive blue green which means this is a skill f exclusively to blue green, the blue green multicolors, where if it would be KO'd if, a, if the card would be KO'd, you can discard a card that is both blue and green, or a blue and a green card, to be able to bring it back from the drop area, but then negate that skill for the turn, but it's only once per turn you can do that, as far as I'm aware. And so that's quite nice in the fact you can, if it gets KO'd, you can bring it back by just discarding uh, cards to help bring it back. And the way it can be played from the drop is this activate main, where for one green, if your leader card is green or a phantom demon card and you choose one Rurigon card with an energy cost of either 4, 6 or 7 in your battle area so both the 4 and the 6 drop can be triggered off that and that's quite nice in that if you combo either, if you KO one of the 4 or 6 drops you can then use the uh, then trigger the effect to bring out the next part of the chain which is quite cool so this is another way to force off the KOing of the, ch of the chain to progress while also bringing out a big 9 drop 30k and then if you do all that, you play at the play what from uh, from your drop area, this card from your drop area, and you can't activate the activate main skill and copy this card for the turn. So it's, so it's still quite nice to be able to, another way to KO the chain will also bring out something for it as well. And then it's got an auto where if your leader card is green or a phantom demon card as the cost, when this card activates blocker skill, then you choose one card from your opponent's hand and discard it. So more discarding for the, um, for the green side of it and from activating blockers, so that's quite nice to defend with it, discard a card from your hand, and then if they do kill this, you revive, all, revive it, bring it back out, and then have it block again with, which is quite nice. And the other target we have for it is the old blue 9-drop, Colossal Malice, who would have gone back from the same set as the leader came from, actually, set 4. It's got an EX Evolve of 2 blue and 2 uh, norm, uh, of any kind on the top of a Hurigan with its energy cost of 7 and more, which you're not going to do. Just making it say it because you could potentially put on the M9 drop if you really really wanted to. It has barrier, so this is a nice target to bring out that's hard to remove. And I'm only going to go over its uh, first skill because the second skill isn't viable because your leader doesn't match the requirements for it. So it's, its first auto skill is actually playable in a deck is when you play this card, you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, and it's a one card from your opponent's hand, and place them on the top of their owner's deck in any order. So that's really nice and off the 6 drop you can bring out this bottom neck one of the battle cards in the battle area as long as it doesn't have barrier and then pick a card from the hand and put them both, put both those two cards on the top of your opponent's deck in any order you choose which is nice because it disrupts them for the next two draws they know what they're going to have and not get anything new and you're like just, you can use nice removal and hand control as well which is quite cool. So this is the that's, that's the Hurugan chain. And we do have pieces that help go through, help go through, and uh, also help KOing outside of the um, leader, outside the Unison Sari, the six drop, and the nine drop. First of all, we have Hoy Hidden Ambition. So this is a nice cantrip for if you've got energy to spare and you want to do something with it, because it's just first auto is when you play this, draw a card, nice in that way. But its main feature is its second auto, which is choose one of you, choose one of your green Harudagon or Minota cards and KO it as a cost. When this card is used in a combo, it gains 5,000 combo power for the battle. So that's nice in the fact that you get a kink. Not only do you help go through the chain and KO something to go up that progress with the chain, you also get a 10k, free 10k combo with this as well, which is quite nice. And that's why we play four copies of it. And the other way to KO is Tapion Unsealed Hero. So this is unique, a two cost uh, 10k, also 5k combo, which is quite nice. There's not much dead combo power in this deck. 
and it also is choose one of your ring cards and KO it as the cost. So that's an, once again another way to KO it, but you don't. But it doesn't work on Minota, only on Hirudagon chains parts. And um, at the end of this, at the end of a battle where this card was using the combo, you play this card in rest mode. So not only do you, that's why it's got unique, so you can't keep doing it to play it, but it's just nice that you can use this to KO, help KO your chain to help progress and also bring it out as a uh, card in the battle area. And if you do it defensively on your turn, you can then use it again from your battle area to progress even more, because you can use it again. Because, yeah, it's just at the end of a battle where this guy was using the combo, it doesn't matter where, the, where it's played from the combo, so if you do it defensively, play it, the next turn, swing and combo again from your battle area, you get to play it back in your battle area again. So that's really cool. I'm going to play two copies of this, because we've got four uh, Ahoy, and it only works on the Hurrigon parts, not the Minota, so we don't want to have too many of those just in case you get stuck and need the KO of the Minota. Then we have another way to help get the uh, the chain set up, and also have some blockers in defense or even pa uh, attack power, which is uh, Tapion Fate of a Hero. Now this is, this is handy because it's a uh, 2 cost 15k blocker. With activate main where you ever play one blue or one green, that's why the divide things there, so you either choose a blue or a green energy to use, normally it's going to be a green in this. Um, if your leader card is green or a phantom demon card and you discard this card from your hand, you choose one of two effects. Now you ever choose the draw card and then play this card from your drop it at the end of your turn, which is nice, you get the draw. And then at the end of the turn get a blocker out, if need be. Or, which you may, this is the effect you're mainly going to use turn one if you open with this, is activate up to one sealed music box from your deck then shuffle your deck. So you might be wondering what sealed music box is. It's the fill card for the deck, which will come over in a bit, and it's a nice way to filter through the deck and find it turn one if you don't open with it. Normally, if you open with this and a sealed music box, you're going to want to chuck back the sealed music box and keep this because this helps deck fin by um, bringing it straight from the deck. Then we have the super combo choice, which is great again with this deck because of the fact you can put things back, and that is great Saiyan Man Vanquisher of Villainy. So it's got super combo trait, meaning you can only control four of these in the deck. And the reason why it's good is because it's also where if your leader card is green, your life's at four or less, and all your energy is green, which is going to be you're not going to charge anything. There's no you're not going to charge colossal uh, malice, and all the rest of the cards are have green in them in some way, shape, or form. And uh, when you when you use this card in a combo, it gains 10k combo power for this battle, and then you may choose one of your um, one one card in your hand, place it at the bottom of your deck, and if you do, you draw two. So this is handy where if you've got Hirudagon pieces in your hand that you don't want, you want to play from the deck instead of the hand, you combo with this, put it to the bottom of the deck, so then when you KO the, cut with the piece, you can then bring it from the deck rather than your hand so you don't lose hand uh, cards in hand from it. And then we have the next one being Freeze the Charismatic Villain. This is just a staple in most green if they're running a, uh, a unison, just because of the fact it's one of the best cat plays in the game. And you can easily get a load of markers on your hero gun with the plus two or the plus one and just have it available for free. Then we have the secret rare choice being Broly Ultimate Agent Destruction. Now you can play different secret rares if you want. You can play the Pan Secret Rare, Kai Secret Rare. You can play other ones. You can play the Boo or whatever. But I like this one for the fact that it, it can be played for free and with your leader skill being able to take a life each time and just taking damage, you can easily put yourself down to one to fill the um, make sure it's fully live. So it's a double strike, dual attacking, and ultimate, which all secret heroes have. And it's got two autos. First one is when your green battle card with energy cost of seven or more is removed from the battle area by, by a skill or a code, you can activate this skill. You may choose all, of, all cards other than this card from your hand and place them in your drop area. And if you do, play this card from your hand. So that's quite nice. That's easily triggerable by the nine drop hero gun. So you can just KO the 9 drop uh, for Rodigan, that's the blue, yeah, blue green one, and it's a green card, that's 7 or more, KO'd, triggers this effect. And all you need to have in your hand is this, plus one other card to trigger this effect to do that. And then it's ever also, which is the reason why you need to go down to 1 life, is because when this card attacks, if, you life, if your life is at 1, your opponent chooses all cards in their hand and places them in the drop area. So it's really nice in the fact that your opponent could have a beefy hand, you just go swing with this, even if they counter, you strip them of all cards in their hand once the, uh, all the counter is resolved and this resolves. So it's really good. And having dual attack double strike means that on both swings, it's going to rip every card out of your opponent's hand to make sure they can't do anything. And then we have some extra cards to help. So first we've got the Silver Music Box, the full card that um, Tapion plays. 
And this is how you're normally going to start the chain without, because you don't want to pay two for minutes to the player, you want to play Silk Music Box. So normally turn one you want to get this out, because it's a fill card, and it's auto, which is very really nice. From, so from when you play it, when you activate this card, you look up to seven cards from the top of your deck, add up to one Herudagon, Tapion, Minota, or Green Unison card with a specified cost of one, from your deck, add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. So it's nice that it, it grabs any part of your chain, so it grabs any of these, um, even the Hoi, even, no, no, it doesn't, the, I think it grabs all the chain apart from Hoi, all the like main pieces, so it grabs the whole chain, it can even grabs the two Tapion cards as well, and the Unison, so it grabs a whole lot of cards in your deck, and you're barely going to whiff off this card. And then it's got, is activate main is how you start the chain up, where for one green, normally you're going to do this turn two, or even turn three if you want to save it to make sure it doesn't get wiped before you get a turn three. And that is by paying one green, you place this card from in the zone's drop area, then you choose up to one Tapion or Minotaur card with entry cost of three or less from your hand and play it. And normally you're going to be mainly wanting to play Monota. And we're going to play three copies because you can play it off Tapion and yeah, normally once you once you see one you don't need to see anymore, we just want to make sure we have three to make sure that not all of them are put in your life, because it's, it's highly unlikely all three get put in your life, but if you do, then you're just very unlucky. And next we have something to help us get to that turn 3, which is Homicidal Clones. And now, since your leader can put itself down to a forward help awaken easily enough, normally you want to put yourself down, but your opponent might have a different plan to kind of aggress you further, to stop you getting to turn 3, and kind of try to kill you, or even try to put you from a really low life to always, even though you do want because of the secret rare, you might have a tr trouble and not want to combo loads of cards in your hand to um, lose maybe the chain and stuff. To help the uh, defend, so you've got Harmoth Saddle Clones is one of the best counter players at the moment for each color, and uh, because it can negate two attacks. Because it's a counter play, if your leader card is mono green, which ours is, and you get attacked and play one meta token, which has 5k power, 5k combo power, and uh, also has blocker as well for the turn. So that's great. In fact, you negate attack with Harmoth Saddle Clones, negate that attack, play a token, and in the next attack you can block with the token. And the, good, the reason we won this over um, Demonic uh, Dormant Potential is because Dormant Potential doesn't negate the first attack, lets the second attack go through after that, but then even though it restricts down to only having two attacks, it still doesn't stop either of those two attacks and makes you lose two cards from hand, which is not something you is as great. And it's only free where if you've got a Herudagon on board, the Unison, which you're not always going to see it. and Homicide Clones is a lot nicer than be able to guarantee stop two attacks and you've even got your chain and with the Giant Force and Freezer you can disrupt your opponent a lot easier. And it's also played for free as well without having to have any requirements apart from your life which is uh, when your life's at five or less you can activate this card's counter skill without paying any energy cost by take, adding a card from your life to your hand instead. And then the last card of the deck is an R Overrealm of SS4 Barlock, fighting against fate, because uh, you don't really need to drop apart from the Herudagon 9 drop, but then if you've already triggered that or have one to discard after overwhelming, it's not too bad, and it just adds more pressure applying more attacks, because with the chain you can get a load of attacks off, like you can get an attack from Minota, an attack from Hero, from the 4 drop, from the 6 drop, and then everyone from either the 4 or 6 drop, uh, well 4 or 9 drop, then from your leader, Potentially from a Tapion you've got on board, and then from the SS4 bar, and even more from the uh, Secret Rare for well if you do drop that. So you can get a load of attacks off in this chain, while also disrupting your opponent's combo area, and just going ham on them. And you'll be attacking with your leader until you awaken as well and go off and turn free, which either be making them lose more cards at hand or get critting their life, which is great. So this adds helpful pressure, and as I said, since you don't need to use a drop, and you can fill up quite quickly with carrying your cards to go up the chain you can fill that up with six easy enough. And that is it for the deck. So with the with the um with the turn progression it's gonna be turn one, you wanna try and use your tape on to play um sil sil music box from your deck. If you don't have tape on you wanna just hard cast sil music box. If you don't have tape on you wanna either use Hoy or something to make use of energy and draw through or play a unison and get that set up. Then on return two is when you want to use a silver music box to bring out your Minota, maybe play a Never Tapion, but use it to more draw a card and have a blocker to help defend. And then turn three is where you go off um, by swinging with your chain, and then after you swung with it, swing with something else to KO it to go up the chain further, and then go up until and just keep pumping it down. And if they survive it, 
you just do it again each turn, just going through, through and harder. And if you find your secret rare, you want to keep hold of it and try and um, if you do see your secret rare, that's when you can try and hold off awakening and just taking hits, try and get down to one life. So that way you can go, okay, go off with your chain, go the nine drop, kill the nine drop in some way, drop the eight drop and just pressure hard that way. So you can be very aggressive when you turn three. But that's it. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it and like the vid deck, like the explanation. Uh, it just helps me out. And also comment down below if there's any changes you feel you make or any uh, things you would change. I don't mind uh, starting up a conversation in the comments, just getting a bit of a discussion going about the deck because I do like this deck. It's quite enjoyable. It's just a pity that the uh, secret rare is so expensive and hard to obtain because of collectors and the fact it's one of the more favourite cards among uh, fans being Broly and also feel free to subscribe that keeps you up to date with my videos as when they drop and especially if you click the notification bell that gives you alerts when my videos do drop which is regularly for every week and also helps me get to my goal of a thousand subs which I'm currently still just over a uh, quarter of the way there so once again thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye for now